Now we're moving into lab 11. In this lab, we'll be discussing facial bones. Facial bones are different from cranial bones in that they have no direct contact with the meninges of the brain, those sh kind of shrink-wrapped layers around the brain. These bones do not touch any of those layers, um, and that is a critical distinction between cranial bones. You've got 14 facial bones. They're going to serve as attachment um, of facial and jaw muscles. And those 14 bones are listed here, the vomer, inferior nasal conchi, nasal bones, maxilla, mandible, palatine, the zygomatic, and the lacrimal bone. We've highlighted those bones here on the image. And we have this mnemonic device, uh, Vigo cannot make my pet zebra lunch. This might help you um, on the next practical quiz. Let's get into these bones here. First is the vomer, indicated by this blue arrow. And the vomer is going to be just inferior to your um, nasal septum or your nasal cavity. Um, and this bone, the Latin word vomer means plow. And if you, next time you're in lab or open lab, check out, check out this bone on the skull model and you can see that it actually does look like a plow that a farmer might use. Um, and this bone is going to be important for supporting cartilage of the nasal septum. Next bone we've got here is indicated by this black arrow. This is called the inferior nasal conchi, and this is in fact a separate bone, um, unlike the superior and the middle nasal conchi, which are part of the ethmoid. The inferior nasal conchi is a separate bone. Just superior to your uh, nasal uh, septum is the, are your two nasal bones. Um, these form the bridge of your nose, and they're going to support muscles and cartilage around your nose. Um, typically, when people break their nose, they actually damage the cartilage. That was, um, that's at your nose. Um, but if you, if you severely damage your nose, uh, you will, in fact, or you can, in fact, break these bones. Next, we're showing the uh, maxillary bones. And this is what's going to form your upper jaw. So it's this area right in here. It forms part of your, part of your cheekbone. The other part we'll, we'll highlight in a minute here. And this is where uh, your upper teeth are going to insert. This is where your upper teeth are going to be located. Now there's a couple of uh, features on the maxillary bones that we would like you to know. The first is indicated by this black arrow, this lower black arrow here. And what we're highlighting are these sharp projections coming down in between teeth. Um, and this is coming off of the, the maxillary bones. And we call this the alveolar process. And if you were to look in the mirror tonight uh, while you're brushing your teeth, you notice that your gum kind of comes down in between your teeth. And that's because your gum is covering that alveolar process. Now, the, the ridges, or the, the kind of upside down U's, where your teeth actually stick up into, those are called your alveolar sockets. And that's what it holds your teeth in place. Now, we we're showing another feature here. This is indicated by this arrow. And this is called your infraorbital foramen. Infra, remember, means inferior. And orbital means your eye socket. And the foramen, of course, is a hole in anatomy. And so this is your inferior, um, or sorry, infraorbital foramen. On this lower image, our red arrow here is representing the anterior two-thirds of the hard palate. Um, and this is formed by the maxillary bones. This is going to be very important, particularly in forming speech sounds, um, and it allows our tongue to push up against the hard palate and make harsher sounds, such as T, T sounds. And this uh, posterior third is made up of the soft palate, 
Um, and that's a totally different bone that we're going to get into in a minute here. Next bone we're moving into is the mandible. This is going to form your lower jaw. Your maxillary, you can think of that as your upper jaw, and your mandible is going to be your lower jaw. Um, your mandible is in fact two bones that fuse together at the mandibular plate. We talked about this in earlier labs. This is a bony joint. So very um, unlikely that this bone, these bones are going to move at this point. However, the mandible is the only bone in your skull that can move. And you know, that's pretty obvious. I'm, as I'm talking, I'm using my mandible. And uh, anytime you eat, you of course have to open your mandible for chewing. And um, if we recall that that joint is called your temporomandibular joint. And some of the features here that are associated with that temporomandibular joint are highlighted here. First, we have the mandibular fossa, which is highlighted here. And that's going to articulate with the mandibular condyle, which is indicated here. Um, this is going to hold your lower teeth. Again, we have alveolar processes and alveolar sockets. And this muscle or this bone is going to serve as attachment points for muscles of mastication, of muscles of, for chewing. And we're going to get into that in a couple of weeks here. A couple more features. We have the mandibular foramen, which is kind of on the inside of the mandible on that angle there. And this is where, if you ever get your, if you ever had a cavity filled um, on one of your lower teeth, uh, the dentist is going to insert or inject Novocaine through the mandibular foramen. And it's because your dentist needs to access the trigeminal nerve. You have a branch of the trigeminal nerve that comes down here. And the mandibular foramen is the spot where your dentist is going to inject that Novocaine. Now, as I'm, as I'm sure you can relate, when you do get a Novocaine injection um, for a, a cavity of a, of a lower tooth, your whole jaw becomes, um, becomes desensitized. And this is why it's, uh, it's difficult to eat, um, you have difficulty speaking, and it's because that trigeminal nerve runs all the way down here and when your dentist um, injects Novocaine through here, it desensitizes that whole branch of the trigeminal nerve. There's another foramen here, which is the called the mental foramen. Recall that mental, when you hear mental, think about your chin. Um, and this is where dentists will um, insert uh, Novocaine or other anesthetics for wisdom teeth removal. Um, and they're accessing the facial nerve here. Okay, now we're looking at the palatine bones. And these are going to be two bones that are fused together. We have left and right. And the palatine bone is, as we mentioned earlier, it's going to um, create the posterior third of the hard palate. And this is where you're going to have your kind of your soft palate. Um, and if you just run your tongue on the roof of your mouth, and if you just run it back, starting on the anterior portion, run it back posteriorly, you can see that it becomes softer the more uh, posterior you um, run your tongue on the roof of your mouth. And just as in the, um, with the hard palate on the anterior portion with the maxillary bones, the soft palate is going to be important with speech formation. It's going to allow us to make kind of softer um, sounds such as uh, sh sh sounds. Um, the palatine bone is you can you can locate it when we look at the orbit, the bones of the orbit. Those are the bones surrounding the eye, and you can barely see it there. It's indicated by this black arrow. Um, and it is represented in yellow on this image here. Our next bones are our zygomatic bones. 
and these are known as your cheekbones. And if you just, if you kind of just feel where your cheekbones are, this is what you are, you're touching your, your zygomatic bones. Um, they form the angles of your cheekbones. And if you feel posteriorly, if you start right on the, the angle of your cheekbone and you just kind of palpate posteriorly, you can kind of feel this bridge here and we call that your zygomatic arch. And your zygomatic arch is formed by two features. You have the temporal process, which is on the zygomatic bone. That's the anterior portion, kind of right here. And then if you move back posteriorly, you have the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. And it's kind of, it's kind of a jargony term You've got the temporal process of zygomatic bone, the zygomatic process of temporal bone. Um, but just remember that, you know, you've got these two processes, one of which is on the zygomatic bone and the other is posterior, uh, and that's on the temporal bone, and they form this zygomatic arch there. Then our next bones here are the lacrimal bones. We have two of them, one on the right, one on the left. And these are going to form the most medial side of the orbit. Again, the orbit is going to be your eye socket there. A nice way to remember where these bones are is that the word lacrimal means tear duct. And tear ducts are going to be on the medial portion of your eye. And that's exactly where your lacrimal, bo lacrimal bone is. So pretty easy to remember. We've been talking about the bones of the orbit throughout this AV lecture. And I just want to highlight that uh, this is just a way to organize bones. This is a combination of cranial and facial bones. Um, and it's just, it's just all the bones that surround the eye, and it's just a different way of, of looking at these bones and, and kind of organizing these bones. And again, we have seven bones of the orbit, and they're all shown here. Uh, we've got our max maxilla bone, our zygomatic bone, frontal bone, lacrimal, ethmoid, sphenoid, and then our palatine bone. And kind of as this image here suggests, you can kind of spiral in, and it's a nice way to uh, remember those bones. Um, so you can kind of spiral in this way. Now there's a, a nice mnemonic device here that might help you on a practical quiz. My friend Zeus likes eating spicy pizza. And so we would just start with the maxilla, go to frontal, zygomatic, lacrimal, ethmoid, sphenoid, palatine. And we've, we've seen a lot of uh, words today that I've kind of um, equated to, to uh, root words, um, kind of the Latin roots. And you might be thinking, why is Sean doing this? Well, these words come up again and again and again in anatomy and physiology, and it becomes, it becomes extremely important to, to know the root words because it's really going to help you not only on a practical quiz, but um, uh, in your future careers. So, for example... Um, you know, we saw the frontal bone. We know that that's the bone that's going to be on our forehead. We had our parietal bones. We know that makes up the walls of our skulls. The occipital bone, that makes up the back of the head. And you might be thinking, why do I need to know this? Well, we haven't gone into muscles yet. But if I were to tell you, if I were to ask you, where is your frontalis muscle? What do you, where do you think that muscle would be? As the root words suggest, front, that muscle frontalis is going to be on your forehead. Similarly, where do you think the occipitalis is going to be located? That's going to be on the back of your head. Because of this root word occip, that means back of the head. So again, these words uh, become extremely important, not only in, in this lab and in future labs, 
but also in your career. If you, you might come across a word that might be unfamiliar to you, but if you have an understanding of that root word, um, it's going to give you an indication of, of what that word means. And so these become very important.